What is up? Welcome back, Enchanters. We are back from D23 with our massive haul of all the goodies that I bought for myself because, as you all know, I too am a collector. And in this video, we're going to talk about D23, the excitement, if you've never been, what to expect, and why you need to be there in 2026 for the next convention. <music> Now, if you're meeting me for the first time, Enchanters, my name is Jean-Pierre Bon Jovi. I'm a content creator, collector, and retailer myself of many and most Disney memorabilia, collectible figures, and so much more. Many of the things that you see on our channel, we are retailers and we sell. One piece in particular here we are carrying and we are selling, and we'll talk a little bit more about it, but there's actually going to be a full immersive video about it, so we're going to go lightly in depth to, into that piece and what it is that we are carrying. But everything you do see here today is my personal collection and things that I purchased for myself and that I acquired for um, a few people who, um, who are near and dear to me who I supported uh, while attending the event. So what's D23? Don't forget to hit that smash button, subscribe, stay connected, and comment below if you've attended D23 and what your experience has been and or if it is a dream destination trip for you. I'd love to connect with y'all as well. Now, let's talk about D23. This is a semi-annual event. This happens um, once every two years. Is that semi-annual or that's more like bi-annual? No. I, it happens once every two years. <laughs> and now it kicks off every every other every other August. And it is an incredible event. Is where it is where all Disney announcements are made. So it is a three-day event located in Anaheim, California, like literally two blocks away from the Disneyland parks, uh, downtown Disney. It's all within that same area. Personally, this was my first year ever attending. I've never been to Disneyland, so it was a bucket list dream, and it was like, let's kill three birds with one stone type of trip. So I'm so excited I went. Now, I had planned to go to D23 since August of, la no, I lie, since March of last year, and I had no idea that it was a semi-annual event, and I learned that this year. I thought they just didn't have it last year. Then I realized, nope, it happens two times a year. And so what happens is they announce everything happening for the remainder of that year into two, two additional years. So uh, all the announcements happening this year with Disney to the, uh, from from the end of 2024 all the way through the end of 2026 they unveil everything so they unveil everything regarding production like movies music uh, tech uh, Disney plus streaming services all that good jazz outside of that they also go into depth with all their new product innovations so anything that they have product wise it's an incredible event for that and they also speak into what they're doing globally with their parks and where the company is heading as an organization as a whole. It's a celebration as well of icons within the industry of Disney. And it's where like-minded Disney adults go to experience an incredible, incredible jam-packed three-day event. Now this is a con convention and you must pay to attend. Um, I can't quote me here, I believe it's like $115 for 115. I could be wrong, it might be cheaper. I don't remember because my girlfriend was the one who got me the one day pass. We went for Friday. We only wanted to go for one day. We're mainly collectors and what really was a passion for us to go was Lorcana. We're gonna dive into Lorcana in a bit, but the reason why we were going is we're huge TCG players, huge collectors of the game. And we've been playing Lorcana for exactly one year. It's our one year anniversary. And we met all here in Houston. And so it was my girlfriend Alejandra and her husband, Jonathan. And so we had such a great time. Uh, we we've been planning this trip since we met and i was like i'm not a gold member she was a gold member and so she could always have gotten a plus one i was like i don't know if i want to pay to be a gold member let me tell you i'm going to pay to be a gold member in 2026 because i'm getting my own ticket we're gonna get into that as well because that was such a nightmare y'all uh when i when it comes to these dolls in particular oh my god i can't wait to tell you that story so we've been planning this trip planning this trip we booked everything uh, we booked our hotel. Uh, our, our hotel was, we were at a Best Western. Honestly, it wasn't too shabby. I think we, it was like, what, 300 a night? It was three of us in a room, 100 bucks a night. 
we did four nights we arrived thursday night we left monday morning so it was four nights 300 bucks a person so i was like okay that's doable i'm not picky you could put me in a motel six and i don't care as long as there's no bed bugs and no like humid st humid stench I'm good. <laughs> uh, I don't care where I sleep. And uh, uh, we do it for the collection, right? But there was no way I was fathoming paying $600 a night for a Disney hotel minimum. Like, that's absurd. I'm gonna pay that in like collectible stuff I'm gonna collect, right? Am I gonna pay that in a hotel? Like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> so uh, we did that. And then I believe the ticket itself was like 115. I could be wrong. I, I, I'm pretty sure you can Google that and know and find out how much the one-day ticket is or you can do a three-day ticket We're doing a three-day ticket next time and then lastly um, It was our airfare. I believe our airfare was like round trip like a little under 400 like 385 So like overall, I think we paid like $800 just for that and then we just had to take two ubers one from the hotel from the airport to the to the hotel because literally the hotel was two blocks away from everything um, we did take an Uber to go to the parks as well, but the Ubers were like, you take an Uber, it's like six, eight bucks. It's nothing. So that was really awesome as well. It was so, 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 so convenient. Um, so we had an absolute just, just blast. Like when I tell you, like I was going with the hopes that I wasn't going to have the best time ever and that I was going to be incredibly disappointed with what it is that I wanted. Because as you know, I'm a collector and the way the event works is Friday's the day. If you're going to want to obtain the hot items, the exclusive items, you go Friday and you're there early, early, early to be one of the first to hit up your favorite booth that you're eyeing. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, if there's a particular like item that you are really, really wanting and if you set your intention to get that item, you're more than likely, there's, I, I like to say there's like a 75% chance and you're there early, you'll get it. Um, and, and, and most people get up to two of their grail pieces that they specifically want. Now, what am I talking about, right? And everything you see here are exclusive. So that means that everything you see here on this table, with the exception of some of the Lorcana stuff here, are exclusives that are only sold during the convention. So what that means is you can only acquire those limited edition and they're timed uh, editions. So that means that they have uh, an edition size to them. So they only made 500 of these pins. That is it. Once they're gone, they're gone. And many of these items are not sold in the secondary market. So a lot of these, a lot of these brands do not resell these products on their website when it's done. It's, that's it. It's like, it's done, it's done. And then you'll never be able to own it again. And so that's what makes it so exclusive. And that would bring, that's what brings so much hype into into going and like it's that rush of like am i gonna get my grill item right and it's it's such an incredible atmosphere i'm gonna say this right now there was absolutely like no tension no fighting i didn't i didn't i didn't experience anyone acting out of order it was incredibly awesome except the first i don't know 20 minutes and we'll get into that as well in a moment if you were there you were there when 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 the doors opened to the actual product expo uh to the vendor floor sorry but um it was such an incredible experience such an incredible experience and again we were going in particular because one of two things this is the most coveted item that i wanted and we were relatively excited as to how easy it was to obtain but technically it wasn't the first day and we'll get to that in a moment so um i we were going for ravensburger lord Kana, and as you can see here this is our this is my grill item that we wanted uh me and i say we if you hear we it's me and my two friends and this is their gift set. And the reason why this was such an incredible grill was, first off, we didn't know how many they were gonna produce. And to date, the world's most expensive released um, D23 exclusive was two years ago, back in 2020, I'm sorry, back in 2023. Wait, 2022, sorry. So back in 2022, Ravensburger announced Lorcana a year before it launched and they made these gift sets. And I believe they made a little under a thousand of like these gift sets at six holographic cards. Today, if you want to purchase that gift set, it is retailing for well over twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. So because of that hype, there was this misconception. Now I don't get me wrong here, I knew that I was that that wasn't the case for this. Um, that this gift set would eventually go for that as well. I got six. You're only allowed to get up to two of these 
uh, per your badge being scanned. So everyone's badge, I had a Friday, ba I had a Friday badge. I don't have it on here right now, but um, they would scan it at the at Raven's Burger, and it would only permit for you to uh, purchase up to just two of these. Now, in day two and three, and a lot of people kept going back and getting more. I didn't. I went to Downtown Disney, and I was able to get two more one day, and I went to Downtown Disney again and got another two more, making it six. So we got six of these. No, I do not plan on opening them. No, I do not plan on selling them. No, I'm not trading them. This is something I really want to hold on to. I personally feel like in about 10, 15, 20 years, um, as Lorcana continues to go strong, as it's already proving, and we're going to get to that in a moment, I know those are going to be worth a pretty penny. And as you know, um, I'm a collector and I like to flip stuff too. So um, I'm not flipping it right now. Um, right now, if you do want to purchase one, they, they're going right now in the secondary market for about $150. So you can purchase it online. And honestly, $150 is more than worth it. After everything you have to spend and what you had to go through to get many of these pieces, like it's a no brainer, like pay the extra 50 bucks and get it today. Because I know by December of this year, they're probably gonna start peaking back up to $200. And uh, within the next five years, I'm, I they may be a little under $500. Uh, these are trading cards uh, like what these are not pins. These are not uh, collectors dolls These are not statues. These are trading cards and trading cards are literally the best investment you can ever make when it comes to an increase of value There's just the card collectible community is willing to pay for it and it is just it, It's definitely something you, you you'd want to hold on to that's my suggestion Of course you can do what you want it's your money. It's your piece. You do as you please with it, right? Um, but that was Ravensburg, and that's what we went for. And while we were at the booth as well, um, let's talk about that. So we got there at 4.30 in the morning, and the line started at 4 in the morning, and we had, um, I counted everyone, I had, we had 125 people in front of us. And I didn't know whether there's five different entrances into the convention center, which is insane. The convention center is huge. So five different entrances, the one we were near, as um, we were like 125th in line, so we were really excited. We're like, okay, so probably gonna be one of the first to get in. That we we're far from the truth. So um, you have to. Um, something to know is you cannot go in to the convention center. So this video is not only gonna showcase everything, like step by step in the process in which we were able to get everything. And trust me, you're gonna want to hear these stories because it was quite epic. But um, where was I with my story? Yeah. So. The, how, how the process works so we were waiting in line i think we waited in that line for like 35 minutes maybe at most by like 5 30 yeah it was 5 30 the lot they already they allowed us to go through it was it, no i lie it was f yeah 5 30 yeah we didn't wait in that line at all it was five i lied we were only on that line for 30 minutes at 5 a.m they are started moving us to go past through security and while we were going through security that was about 30 minutes you're right in the very front of security and uh just so you know you can't bring in any stools you can't bring any sort of food or liquids it will be taken away and confiscated and thrown away so it's something to note you cannot bring any food i guess they want you to spend money um at uh, within the convention center they had food trucks like from other vendors that were there and so they banned any form of food and unless of course it's some form of like you have like a medical uh i guess a medical excuse or a doctor's note but outside of that all of that is discarded so do note that in advance because that will be thrown away uh, my friends had to throw we like literally went to 7-eleven and we had to throw away everything we bought which was quite unfortunate um uh, but we also knew that food wasn't allowed past security, so we did read upon that as well. Uh, we just didn't think we were going into security so soon. Uh, after you go into security, you go into the building. Uh, there's a subtle line that forms, and you're going to go into the back of... There was like this entire room right where the, uh, where the actual expo is taking place and all the vendors are. Uh, there was a back portion of the room where like they had you boxed into these yellow markers and you would go and sit stand where ideally you wanted to be in the con convention center that's it so if you wanted to be in the certain area you would you would stand in that area and it was you know up to about eight about seven people across and it would go quite deep and we were the very first we were right in the center section we, that was where Ravensburger is because we had a map um, something you get to know is you have to have the uh, my Disneyland, the Disneyland app, and you have to have the D23 app. Very, very, very important. 
And so we stood there in hopes that once the doors would open, we'd be one of the very first. And we were the very first line to go in and to go to Ravensburger, which was like halfway all the way down into where the entrance was that we came in. And before I get to that, something you should know as well is that at 4 a.m. sharp, the virtual queue opens to many stores. Now, Ravensburger did not have a virtual queue, but after I tell you what happened, <laughs> they're definitely gonna have one in two years. But um, so all, many vendors, the most highly sought after vendors, will have a virtual queue, meaning you cannot attend without, a, without that virtual queue on day one. Day one is really where all the chaos is. Day two, Saturday, is a lot of the panels, exciting stuff. Um, and day three is like the stragglers who are just like getting the last minute stuff. So Saturday and Sunday are definitely nowhere near as chaotic as Friday. And all the virtual queues are, are mainly just for Friday into maybe Saturday morning. And so you get on the D23 app and you see all the ones, all the, all the, all the, the vendors you may want to at attend. And this is where we talk about this doll, the Ariel Limited Edition doll, which is so incredibly sought after and highly coveted. And if you wanna see a full spec of this doll, uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of her here, but I'm gonna have little small shorts where you'll see a lot more details of the doll as well for many who wanted her and didn't have the opportunity to get her. And so you get on this app and then there's about, I think there was six, uh, there were six uh, vendors that were, and mainly all, they're all owned by Disney that had these virtual queues. It was the pin vendor, which is one of the most popular and Disney and Disney marketplace. Now, I didn't know where the dolls were being sold because the dolls showed as if they were being sold under the My Disney store. There, I mean, there was a Disney store queue and then there was the marketplace queue. And so I was attempting to get on at 4 a.m. Um, me, um, my girlfriend Alejandra and her husband Jonathan all were attempting to get into one of each. Just, and hopefully we had different like cues where you can bring up to one person with you as well, which is pretty awesome. And I was going for the Disney store. Jonathan was going for the market center and she was going for the, 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 the pin shop, the Mickey's of something. I don't know what it's called. I'm not a pin collector uh, in, in, to that extent. I just like fake pins and not all, I like just some. And so she got hers and me and Jonathan, because we were linked under her account, she tried to give us the tickets. Unfortunately, um, we were not able to get into any queue. Like it couldn't find us and the system glitched. It allowed us to get into the queue, but when we went to click, it basically said there was an error. So we didn't get into a queue. So she only got the pin, the pin collectors one. And we were like, oh my God, oh, this sucks. And at that point we're like, well, we have no choice. We're going to Ravensburger, like they're our number ones. Like that's what we're going for. And so about, we were in line. We got in, like I said, at 5.30, we were, we were already in. And then we waited four and a half hours to enter. And about two hours before we entered around 7.30, Jonathan gets an alert in the email saying that you just been accepted your group 25 to the, the, the Disney market. We're like, oh, sweet. Now, again, we don't know where the doll's going to be because it says they're in the Disney store and that they're also in the, in the Disney market. So we're like, oh, hopefully they're in both. They put 501. No, that's not the case. These are only in the Disney market. Thank God. <laughs> um, so... We get in line again. We're very, we're the very first. At this point, we're like, okay, well, we have enough time because you have up to an hour in which they call you. So they were calling him to be there at nine thirty. They were calling him, so we had to be there by no later than ten thirty. And so we get in line, and you go to go. And everyone goes in, and we did not know this, but they bum rush everyone just it's not like everyone's like whoever's in the front is walking no people are like literally about to stampede over each other over each other a woman next to me falls i pick her up and i said this is the only part where i feel like the situation wasn't handled great and and there was a little child as well who almost like got stampede and again it was just crazy it wasn't necessary for that if everyone would just sort of walked we in in, in, an, in, a, in an appropriate order it would have been fine and um, long story short, um, Alejandra ends up making it. She's in the second row of the queue into the Ravensburger booth. I get up to the booth where you have to basically go around in circles where, and it's, and it's like closed off by like these, you know, those, those, those like movie theater 
trips that <laughs> and um, right when I get there security stops because we're literally like this and people are stampeding over each other and it's as if everyone who was in that uh, queued everyone who was in, in the waiting queue literally we're talking about over 20,000 people just want to go to Ravensburger. It's insane. And if you are curious as to how many people this event attracts, um, throughout the three days, 120,000 people show up for this event. So it's a huge, huge, huge convention. And so uh, we get stopped securities like, we're gonna stop this. If y'all don't, if y'all are not, if y'all are not patient and you don't walk, please be patient. So reopens it. I'm the first one to go in. Um, I meet up with her. I'm able to cut two rows because I was like two rows behind her. I was like, I'm with her. So I was able to cut with her and we were like literally, uh, we were like maybe within the top 50 people in line. So yeah, we were like the top 50 in line. So we we're like, okay, we're good. We're going to get this gift box. Again, Ravensburger doesn't mention anything about this gift box because this is what we, this gift collection. And what we learn is we because we knew this was happening was that this was also going to be in six other locations so it was in europe um in disneyland paris i believe it was also in in the uk it was in the new york times square it was at disney springs downtown disney which is uh, uh, literally like three blocks away from the convention center and it was going to be at d23 at the ravensburger booth so we knew ravensburger would have the larger allotment and immediately like that morning what's great is like we're finding out by 9 a.m. that UK and Paris sold out. Uh, and everyone who was in line pretty much got it, but they did sell out. We find out that New York only had 250 of them. And they lit 250, that's all they got. They got the smallest allocation in the world of all, all seven locations. So, um, I mean, I feel so bad for my fellow New Yorkers who were not able to get one and who waited. They were waiting in line from like 8 p.m. the previous day, which is insane. And so only 250 people were able to get it there. And so at this point we're like, oh my God, like, is it, is it really limited? We have no idea. We have not heard from Downtown Disney because Downtown Disney um, does, would not open, I believe until, I believe theirs was not opening until 8 a.m. at uh, Pin Traders in Downtown Disney. So we're like, well, let's hope, let's hope. And like this, oh, there's again, there's overhype over this. You know, there's a scarcity context. Are we gonna be able to get it? And again, you have 15,000 people going towards this booth. It is insane. Um, if I have to be honest, 15,000 people were there in the morning, but I would say about 8,000 people were specifically headed towards Ravensburger. Like, that's it. There were people that just knew that they had to be there because they were doing someone a favor having a gift set, and they had to pick up this limited edition card, which we'll go into in a moment. And so, um, Unfortunately, Jonathan doesn't isn't able to get in her husband. He basically like gets pushed over He's in the crowd and they cut the line. And they say that's it. Whoever's in is in everyone else. You must leave and Basically, they're gonna do like some form of system where you come back. We thought that was it for the day There's no clarification. We get in line and we got, I got my two things um, right when you walk in they scan your badge and you're able to get uh, so as you zoom in you get the commemorative one-year anniversary brave little Taylor gold Lord Conopin. and if you attended Gen Con this was actually given away two weeks ago so we already knew what this was going to be um, this pin is worth like 10 bucks right now it's not worth much they gave so many of these it's insane um, they had so many they could literally throw them away. Um, actually, towards the very end, end, end of the day, they stopped giving. Uh, I believe they stopped giving it. We got that, and then I picked up. Uh, you could purchase that uh, anything else, and I was able to pick up the mats. And I'm so glad because this was the only thing that sold out on day one. Where the where the mats? They actually sold out like about. 30 minutes after we left the booth, they were gone. So by uh, about 12 noon, they were gone, gone, gone. We got there at, we got, we got there at, I think around, I was at 10, 15. I, I got in at about around 10, 15 is when I got in to purchase stuff. And within an hour and 45 minutes from there, they were completely sold out. So I got the bell and the casita play mats from Lorcana again. If you don't know what Lorcana is, look into it. It is the most incredible game ever. If you're looking for to make connections with people, uh, you're gonna love, 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 love this. Um, and again, this video is not only showcasing with y'all everything, and I'm a collector, so I collect two of everything, and I'm, I'm a sealed collector, uh, so I'm not planning on ever opening these. Um, one I will always keep, and one I will eventually resale many, many, many years from today. 
Uh, so yeah, so I was able to get these and this is exactly what I wanted. These are not available anywhere else right now. So all local game shops, no one got these. And just recently they just hit Disney Park. So Disney Springs and Downtown Disney is starting to carry them. Um, but that's it. Um, you can't find these so far anywhere else. They were up on pre-order on like Best Buy and Target. Uh, and they'll eventually hit, they'll send a very small allocation to uh, the local LGSs. LGSs are trading card stores. I know they'll eventually send um, some, but that the, the rarest things to ever get in the set are the playmats of the first thing to sell out. So, so glad I got mine. And this is a new thing that they just created, and it is these lore book binders. Now, I'm not going to open them because, again, I'm a sealed collector, but they are these binders with nine... Uh, there it's where you basically keep your collection. This is the Lorcana backing. So there's two different designs. You can hold up to 252 cards. So basically if you want to uh, hold an entire set, that's what it's going to hold for you. And so, uh, yeah, it keeps your cards protected. And this is called a lore book card portfolio. So I got two of these because these were also not made available to LGSs right now at the moment. And so I was like, I need to get them. And then I also got two of these as well, which are some of the first set ever designs. It is Cruella, uh, Mickey, and Moana. And on the other side, it's Aladdin, Maleficent, and Simba. Um, they were the original starter deck hollows that came in. And there's the back if you want to see what the other side looks like. So I had to get these. I don't plan on opening them or using them. I personally don't find these to be practical, but for a, for a, but I got them because of the collectors, just for a collector's value and the nostalgia it's gonna give me in 20 years. <laughs> so following that, um, uh, right when you walk in, I mentioned you got the pin, but you also received the exclusive limited edition card. So as you zoom into this bad boy, <laughs> how, pretty is this so this right here is the sorcerer mickey this this card actually was released uh was it just recently in set four yeah it was released three three months ago and as a rare it was a non-foil card and this card is exclusive because this d23 was all about like the sorcerer mickey so they created this holographic version to it. It actually has indentation to it, which has never been done before on a Lorcana card where there's actual indents, and the indents are in the stardust of the piece. And they were giving this away for free. Now, for context, two years ago, they gave away a Brave Little Taylor Mickey that was a non-foil card. It was just a regular card. And they were like, I wasn't there. I heard they were giving away like hotcakes that they were on the floor. People were throwing them away. They're like, what am I going to do with a card? What is this, a business card? No one knew what Lorcana was. Uh, no one knew what it was going to become. And now some, uh, granted, the, the thousand people who got the gift sets, like, there was like, there was a good solid 5,000 people that knew it would be a big thing. But the majority of people had no idea what it was. And that card today that they they literally could not get cannot like get rid of is now worth drum roll a thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars yes just for stopping by the booth and engaging without purchasing anything because there was nothing to purchase at the time it was just the first I think that uh, uh, one thousand gift sets and that's it Ravensburger had nothing to sell. They were just promoting. They, I mean, they had their tabletop games, etc., but they didn't have any cards to sell because the game didn't come out yet. And so that one card is now worth over $1,000. So you can only imagine the hype behind this. When you have moms, friends, family, people who don't have no idea what Lorcan is, but they know that they have to stop by the Ravensburger booth because they're potentially going to get a card that's worth $1,000. Now, uh, this card... Uh, I always say don't buy into the hype in the beginning ever. Um, when I, I was able to get five of them, I got um, I got one on the first day, two on the second day, and two additional ones on the third day. I ended up going for three days. I'm gonna set these aside just because I don't want to damage them as we showcase other things. And um, I also was able to get pins. I actually lost a pin. I, every time you got a card, you got a pin. Now, one of the cards I got from Ryan, the creator of the game, I, I was able to speak with him, we took a picture, and he just gave me one. Uh, obviously, he, it, it didn't come with a pin, but I did get an extra pin, and it fell out of my pocket. 
I know. <laughs> and then there was a photo op for uh, one of their tabletop games called Chronicle of Light, and there's this bell pin that they gave away as well. So I thought it was pretty cool. And so um, from there, we uh, I was able to, as I was mentioning before, the cards. There we go. So these cards, people had this misconception, and within the first four hours, first six hours of the day, that card was selling for $450 on the secondary market. Again, insane. Don't believe the hype. Like, like, be and be the thing is because social media was saying how they cut the line and no one else could go in and only about like maybe 300 people were able to get the card. There was this misconception in the space that only 300 people were getting this card. And so the card was going for 450 bucks and the card was only exclusive to D23 if you were in attendance. Not like the gift set that was in seven other locations throughout the country and, and over the sea, overseas. So absolutely insane, insane, insane. And so from there, um, eventually the price started dropping and now that card's selling for about 125, 150 bucks. Still, a free card you waited in line for maybe 25 minutes for, for a hundred bucks, that's pretty rad. So if you had multiple copies, now you're able to just like off them. Um, I do feel as if the price will drop consistently until, um, I'm gonna be honest, until the end of the year, until December, I can definitely see that card going for about 75 to a hundred dollars uh, and, and not go higher than 125 or 150. Uh, and then eventually, um, by 2026 i definitely see that having a starting to have a massive increase in value as well so that's me just personally from based on trends and uh, i'm an avid collector and so i am pretty sure that's how it's going to trend so if you got one congratulations and if you want to get one right now i highly recommend getting one under 125 dollars or meet someone locally for 100 bucks that would be awesome i think that's going to be a great investment piece for you in the future um so yeah and then the last thing I bought was this exclusive, it's a villainous board game. Now they've made this before, but this one has an exclusive Lorcana card, which we're going to open right now because I'm so curious to see it. Uh, it's a card that just came out in this new set that just launched. And by the way, August 9th, Lorcana released their fifth set. So that same day, they were also selling a new set called Shimmering Skies. I'm going to put an image right over here for y'all. And... Um, the new set just came out and one of the cards in the set is a prince john and here you get him but in an alternate art and it's a foil holographic card so it's exclusive only to this and this is only being sold during a limited time only so i there you can order this on ravensburger.com um i believe like some big box stores have them as well but i was like you know what i'm there might as well get it so we got it so let me just go get my box cutter so we can cut this bad boy open then we're gonna speak into the next booth we visited, which was the dolls and how we acquired them. All right, so here we got it. Let's get this box cutter and cut her open. Am I ever gonna play this game? Maybe with my buddies when they come over. Um, I love playing tabletop games. I have, again, I've always seen Villainous. Um, again, owned and created by Ravensburger, but um, I've, I've never had the interest to play it, and now that I own it, why not, right? And again, we're only doing it for the card. And here it is. Oh, my God. Um, well, again, we're not going to dive into the tabletop game itself, but, oh, and you are in incredible condition. So there it is. That is the limited edition card, y'all. Oh, I'm so excited. Now... Sometimes the card is great to open and get graded, and sometimes it's best to just keep it sealed. So I'm gonna keep it sealed for now. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> um, and again, I don't know how many of these will be released, how long they'll be available. And again, there's two versions to this to this box. So there's uh, one looks a little bit more like a, it's the same color gray, green. It's like this emerald green, but it has more of a hue of gray. This one's more of an emerald green. But the difference of whether it comes with the promo or not is it has to have this Disney Lorcon exclusive in it. If you see that sticker, guess what? That means it comes with the holographic inside. So yay! <laughs> uh, now following that, 
So Jonathan was incredibly just like, oh, poor guy. He was demoralized. He's the bigger player of all of us. This was like, this is the only thing he wanted was this. And only his wife and myself were able to get it. So he was happy his wife was able to get it, but he thought he was never going to get the gift sets or the promo. So he was completely and utterly just like defeated. And um, he was, so he was now, he had time to go up to the kid. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to go to to the marketplace because I told him I wanted this doll. I was like, I want two, I want one for myself. And I also had someone really near and dear to me who wanted another one. So I was like, listen, give me the doll. Uh, so just wait in line. He's, you know, I sent him a picture of it. So he goes up to wait in line. I finish at Ravensburger at like 1025. And you only have to, to, to go into group 25. You must be there by no later than an hour after your call time. So. He was group 25 and his call time was 9.30. So you have until 10.30 to be in line. So I ran for my life towards the opposite section of the of the, of the convention center. And granted, we come out and the escalator is not working. So I think none of the escalators are working. I don't even know how the place, you know, I don't even know the layout of the place. So I end up walking up these massive stairs. I end up walking towards the wrong section. But anyway, get there. My feet are killing me. We've been standing since 4.30 in the morning. It is now 10.30, six hours of just like pain and torture. And um, I'm able to get in line, even though he, he was already in line, so I could have just walked in line. It's not like they, we were like barricaded or anything. It, you know, the line just t kept turning. Um, uh, and it was out open. So we get in line and we find out from where we're in line, it's going to be an hour and 25 minutes before we get in. So we're not getting in until 12. So it's 1030. We're not getting in until 12 and we're group 25. And I'm seeing so many people in front of us and everyone is able to get one of every item, but everyone's able to bring someone with them. So that means, you know, yeah, but if you have a thousand people ahead of you, you're not getting this doll. Um, and if you were in the top 25 groups and you didn't pick up this this doll, well then, <laughs> you surely made a big mistake. So I was in line, I was cracking jokes, I'm like, I swear to God, if someone walks in and they're ahead of us and I see them walk out with a freaking mug, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> I was like, there's no way you waited two hours in line to walk out with a mug, right? And so they were incredibly like sought after products, but the only thing that was sought after regarding the dolls was this doll. The other dolls, it just didn't make sense to ever buy them because they are edition size with 3000 or more. And those always trend to literally the next week go up on Shop Disney at MSRP. You know, why pay inflated price points or waste the whole day or effort. And they, these boxes are massive and then haul this back and pay for an extra luggage and all this. So this is the only thing I personally wanted from there. Now I did want the Jane doll, which I'm gonna put a picture here, and that was actually released on Thursday. That we arrived Thursday night, but it was I heard it sold out within an hour, um, and that was released at Disneyland on Thursday for D23 day. And unfortunately, we arrived too late that day. Uh, we also didn't have park tickets for that day. And then there was the Tarzan statue, as you can see here. And I'm so excited, thanks to my homegirl, Samantha Davies. She's one of my clients who purchases Jim Shore for me, but she was a personal shopper who was at Animal Kingdom and he was able to pick up the last two copies. And just yesterday, it went up. It showed up in Animal Kingdom. And again, they were supposed to be exclusives only to the Disneyland park, guess not. Um, but Tarzan, the statue showed up and it's a limited edition statue celebrating the 25th anniversary. And if you know anything about Tarzan, it's been literally 25 years since Disney has done any merch for Tarzan. It just doesn't happen. And so, um, uh, she has a personal shop who was able to pick one up and it just shipped out to, it shipped out tomorrow. So I'm so excited. We're going to do a whole video just on that, but I can't wait to unbox that statue for y'all. I'm so excited. And so from there, I was like, all right. Um, this is all I want. We get in line. I'm like, we're not getting it. There's no way we're getting it. Well, guess what? We get in and they still had plenty left. And I was like, sweet. So me and Jonathan each get one. And he does me the favor. He picks one up for me. I get one myself. And um, I'm going to be honest with you. The only high ticket items that people were really excited for were there was the, the, Star, Wars, uh, the Star Wars tour ship exclusive so it was the ship of the ride the simulator ride i believe in hollywood studios and i believe it's also in disneyland uh no it's in california adventure i think is it in dca i don't know uh but we were able to do that uh we, that was one of the biggest ones but it was a 300 dollars, and the box is literally the size of this table it is massive and i kept telling myself 
how are these people bringing this home? This, that isn't a carry-on, it's a check-in. It's too long to fit in a luggage. The only way you can get that back home is going to a UPS that same day Friday because Lord knows, good luck trying to get into any shipping before 2 p.m. on a Saturday to have that shipped to you. And so it literally was the worst purchase you could have made. And if you look right now, it's right now selling in the aftermarket for about 350 bucks, which makes no sense because you paid 300 and you paid way more than 50 bucks to ship that to you yourself. It makes no sense. Um, honestly, if you were at home and you can get it today for 350, <laughs> congratulations. You didn't have to go through the hassle of all of that. Uh, but that was, in my experience, the second most coveted item that everyone wanted. And then from there were the statues. So they had the Headless Horseman, Mr. Toad's, uh, Mr. Toad's, uh, whatever his name is, the Toad from the ride. Again, I'm not too familiar with him. It was this piece of him in a car coming out of a wall. It was a statue and I'm gonna post an image right over here. And it's like this wall mount, I will say it was absolutely epic. I, I believe this year celebrates the anniversary of it. So that was so epic, that piece sold out. That only was available up to the first day. And then um, Madame Leota, I'm gonna put an image right here. The Madame Leota piece, y'all. It's like the first ever holographic piece and had an interchangeable face portrait. I wanted it so badly, but again, they did not ship everything. Like you were not able to, this is another thing at D23, you're not able to like purchase a bunch of stuff and then have them ship it to you. No, you got to figure it out. You're on, I'm like, look, we already got a ton of crap. There's no way I can fit that in my luggage. And it was incredibly heavy. I was like, nope, we're passing on it in hopes that it will show up in the parks one day in the future. Uh, but from my understanding, it was exclusively only a D23 thing. And so I do regret not getting it. But then again, I don't collect that specific, I love Haunted Mansion, but I don't collect that specific subject of statues. So I'm okay with Iron Studios right now, who's consuming uh, and putting the biggest hole right now in my pocket. So I was like, I don't need another one. <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, that, that was that. And, um, uh, those were the three, uh, and again, the Headless Horseman, which I'll put an image right here as well. Um, uh, those were the three statues that sold out uh, by day one. They were no longer available come day two. So I heard that if you made it, uh, if, if on Friday you get into the market anytime before like 4 p.m., you're able to get pretty much everything. Um, except the most highly coveted item, which is the doll. So if you are within the first 28 groups, there's a really good chance you can get the doll. Anything over 20 groups, you're not getting the doll. Uh, exclusive only to a thousand by then, there have been well over about 1,200 people who have been in and they have most likely already all purchased the doll. So this is the doll. Uh, so it is a pearlized, box so it has like an opal pearlescent um finish to it as you zoom in this retail for $179.99 what's really awesome also is if you are a gold member so you can buy a d23 pass but if you are a gold member meaning you pay you play you pay for that annual pass you were able to get 10 percent off a few of these shops and the marketplace was one of them that you were able to get any disney shop you would get 10 percent off and so that was pretty rad. So we did save 10% off on this piece. Uh, and I know like basically you, we didn't basically took off the tax and some, I believe we paid like 175 for this, which was pretty awesome. Um, we saved 18 bucks, but after tax and everything, we paid like 169, if I'm not mistaken, 171, something like that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, so, so, so exciting. Y'all so exciting. Oh wait, there's some, little tape residue here on the box. I'm very anal about that stuff, y'all. <laughs> and it's gone. So yeah, and so as you open the clam, this is magnetize the doors and there you have her. Isn't that not a sight of beauty? Now this is her in her peasant dress. Um, absolutely gorgeous. What, um, now this piece is going to be released in 3,000 units come this October. They're releasing a fall edition of this. The only difference is that one will not have the bouquet of roses, the bouquet of flowers. And also, she has like a little shawl. And again, they're very cheap, cheap, cheap accessories that make this exclusive. Literally, they're just those two accessories. And it seems as if her dress is going to be a little lighter, where here it's more of a royal color. 
Nevertheless, it is absolutely gorgeous, and as we all know, The Little Mermaid is the most popular princess, and her items typically sell more than any other. Uh, here's a little bit more about the artist and the Certificate of Authenticity. This is piece number 598, and it's also pearlized as well. It comes with this little pouch with an envelope, and you slide it in. It is just stunning, absolutely stunning. Stunning, stunning, because her shoes are gorgeous. Now, there's so many content creators who have created full immersive reviews on this. So if you want to see it more in depth, make sure to do so. Now, following that, the, um, what I really, I found out the day before on Thursday, Iron Studios, as you all know, I'm an Iron Studios retailer and collector. Um, Iron Studios announced that they were making, now get this, a lot of people knew about this last minute because the, this was the biggest reveal on the 24th. When this one hit, when this piece hit socials on the, on the 24th, sorry, on the 8th of August, Thursday, it, it, this hit like at around, I believe it was like 6 p.m. Um, right on who is the CEO of the company went and did this, um, this uh, like sneak peek video all over socials. Uh, he was front and center of the camera and he started talking about this exclusive that took many, that took a long time in the making uh, under a lot of going back and forth with Disney and licensing to release this exclusive piece. Now this is exclusive only to 500 units worldwide. 250 were allocated here in the United States and the other 250 units are only be, are being allocated to Brazil. So one shipment is here, one shipment in Brazil. So if you were at the event, only 250 of these statues, which is insane. Now this piece retails for, to, retailed at the expo for $250 and you can only purchase this piece at the expo. You cannot purchase this piece on the secondary market. I mean, uh, not, you can, well, if someone wants to resell it, but um, this isn't being sold to retailers uh, this isn't, you can't find this piece, Iron Studios isn't going to be selling this piece to the public, whatever, you know, wanted to sell out and that's it. If there were a few pieces left over, then they were bringing those back to Brazil and they were going to, um, you know, there, if you're not aware, there's a D23 in South America and it takes place in Brazil later this year. So that's where those units were going um, if in the event that they didn't sell. So... When I went, I literally was so excited. I was messaging um, them on socials, like, I'm gonna be there. I know they've been following me on socials because I'm one of the biggest collectors of their Disney pieces. And um, one of the only content creators who's actually showed full immersive reviews of the first five pieces that have launched. I'm gonna link one of them at the end of this video. You're gonna be able to see the scar. And after you see that one, you can see the other ones. But Iron Studios is like the Rolls Royce of statues. Um, if you don't know who they are, get used to them because they are the biggest company in the world when it comes to 110 scale statues. That means that if you were to get 10 of these and stack them up, it would create a life-size version. But what's, they are made, also made of polystone. This is not resin. Uh, this is polystone. Polystone is a mixture of stone and resin combined, and that's what makes polystone. It's far more expensive to work with, um, and it requires, you can't just like, paint over it you have to everything is basically airbrushed um, and just to create this piece you can't see it here and we're, i'm going to do a more immersive review next week we have a full review of this piece and we're going to unbox it and you're going to be able to see all the details but um i'm just going to put this right over here for y'all to see right over here um and if we could zoom in on that, you can see it. Uh, it does come with the commemorative box as well. Um, and these are numbered. So these are numbered out of 500, um, which is the very first time that any Disney statue from Jim Shore, um, from Jim Shore, from, <laughs> here's me being on automatic, from Iron Studios actually comes numbered. So, um, and at the very back, I do want to say this, there's this gold plaque that says, only hope that we, I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. And that's on the back of the plaque. And it's the iconic uh, park bench of Mickey and Walt. And you can't see it here, but you see all his age spots, his wrinkles, the detail, every single strand of hair. These are hand painted. So it starts off as a hand sculpt. 
it goes into eventually becoming and again a lot this is all magnetized too a lot of these pieces so his arms are magnetized they're very strong magnets and it looks seamless and all of these details um there's a huge process um when it comes to these statues to, to produce this one statue it takes about almost a week um from the point in which they start painting a week there are many 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 layers of paint that go into creating these statues now typically these polystone statues are about one eighth one sixth one fourth and one half scale and sometimes life size and those pieces again those statues go for thousands and thousands ten thousands of dollars this is the same concept but it's shrunk into a one tenth scale and it still has all that incredible high detail and it's just as intensive to produce and that's what a lot of people don't understand about this y'all know Jim Shore is my heart and you know that, that's my heart and Troy so it really started my massive collection but that's a resin statue that goes through an assembly line and quickly gets painted by artisans surely it takes time you know it takes about a day to paint those pieces this takes a week and this is all done with airbrushing and layers and putting blues and reds just to get the little freckles and the veins under the skin it's insane y'all so there's a lot of work that goes into this uh, so no one do and understand that this is a work of art um, and this is just absolute brilliant so when you think of iron studios know that like that's what you're getting into you're not buying a little statue here or there no this is resin uh, this is in resin uh, a lot of the world of disney pieces that you see for like 250 those are all made of resin those are not made of polystone so it's very important and some of these pieces here are also not polystone so they are made of resin like this park bench is resin so it'll have some light mixed media as well or it'll have like a, a resin little clear like they use some mixed media but everything else is polystone uh so insanely insanely beautiful these pieces do acquire assembly so everything is magnetized as you can see here make these magnetized as well um and again if you want to learn more about this we're going to do a full immersive review and what i wanted to share with y'all is because this was a con exclusive only so you can only purchase this there and they were leaving i was like you know what i have to get my hands on as many of these as i possibly can i want to get my hands on as many as of them so i was able to pay for all of these and um we have a total of almost 50 units already arriving we still have 15 units unclaimed for so you can go to our website today and you can purchase this today these will ship out next week now these retail for 250 before tax in california our price is 325 you have to understand that we have to pay for shipping we are a business we have to we're going to open all of these and inspect them for you as well um, and ship these out to you there is no shipping cost when you shop with us it's always free shipping with any 50 dollars purchase but do understand that 50 that shipping is practically about almost 20 25 to ship this unit that's already being included within the price so that's why these are 325 aside from the work that goes into having to you know bring these to y'all setting this up processing system etc because i do know a lot of people have a bit a real big iffy thing about resellers this is really a labor of love before it is a for-profit opportunity also understand that when we purchase these from iron studios what reason why we were there and we paid to have all of these shipped to us and we paid this as a risk i chose to take is because i know the importance of this brand and what it means when this community starts to invest in iron studios because you're going to be hearing a whole lot more from iron studios and what's coming down the pipeline there's so much and so i knew if i don't get my hands on nearly 50 of these units that's 50 people within the within the u.s that will not have it and some of you who live abroad who are purchasing it and having me because i don't ship yet overseas but you're shipping it to a relative here is going to be shipping it to you right or a shipping service so so many of you have already ordered that have already ordered that and so i knew you would never have the opportunity to own it if i did not make that jump and i truly believe in this brand i love iron studios they are an incredible incredible company based out of brazil their owners are amazing their staff is amazing follow them if you're not already like you're going to be mind blown by all of the ips that they own and what they create is simply spectacular it is as i mentioned before the rolls royce of collectability and so i had to have it 
and I had to have it for you. And thank you all so much. We've already sold 30 units, and so we do have 15 left. So there we have it. Super excited again. We're gonna get a full immersive review. We're gonna look into the box and so much more. And the very last thing I wanted to share with you all was y'all know I love fake pin. And so I had to get the new fake pin set. We're gonna go through these real quick. There was a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of the smaller pieces that came out. And then we have two of the and three of the jumbo pieces. Two of the jumbos and one set. So the first one here is the Carl. Now these were all exclusive to 500 units. So as you zoom in, there we have Carl. If you are curious, these retailed for $20, $20 before tax at the event. Um, by the end of the event, because I went back on Sunday, um, almost 50% of these were all sold out already and they were no longer available. There was very few that they still had. Carl was um, one that sold out. This was the first one that sold out. This is Lilo and Stitch on their tricycle, also limited to 500 units. Thick Pin is also owned by Funko. And um, uh, what's really cool and I love about them is they have ser you, they basically have cards. There's an app you enter. It's a they each have a unique serial number with stats and you get to play with them and upgrade them. And um, certain serial numbers have larger value. It's it's so awesome and it gets you points. It's such an amazing experience. I love pin, fake pins. I think they're the, I don't like pins, but I think these are this is like the coolest concept when it comes to pins. Now this was the only one that had a addition of 1,000 units. Wow! I just noticed that they have two stickers on it. So yay <laughs> so this was one of the only pieces that they still had left over um so there's 1000 of these goofies made and on average these are reselling right now for about 40 to 45 dollars um on the secondary market the next one is uh queen amadala they had only like i think 20 of these left by the end of the day before the con so awesome we also have here loki loki they had about like 30 40 left and he is glitterized. We also had this This sold out. This is like the second one to sell out. This is the um, 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 this is Pumpkin King. There we go. So it's Jack as the Pumpkin King. This sold out immediately. This was incredibly popular. The following, this was our second most popular, was Sora from Kingdom Hearts, but in the Tron uh, neon outfit. Which is really cool. We also have this one right here. This they still had a few left from Rebels. It is the Seventh Sister Inquisitor. And then they had a bundle set. So for nine, because these each reach for forty, and that retails for six for fifty for eighty dollars. So if you bought this separately, you would have paid ninety dollars. But for $80, uh, you would get these three pieces. So you got the old hag, also known as the witch from Snow White. She sold out. She was no longer available. Um, and then Snow White also sold out. And she is glitterized, exclusive only to 500 units as well. And so you basically got these each for 10 bucks, which is pretty awesome. I'm not, I lie, for 15 bucks. So you save 10 bucks, and then the, this is my favorite one. It is the Seven Doors. So this, this is a Jumbo Deluxe pin. By the way, it comes in this beautiful box. And there it is. So it's a massive pin of the Seven Doors. Limited to only 500 units. Only exclusive to this con event. So really excited for that. Then there was the Genie Deluxe pin, also $50. Look at the front. And then there's some glitter on the lamp, his cuffs, and his red belt. This one, so stunning. And one of the most exciting ones, this one sold out. Of all of those, this one sold out. I believe there was a, there was, I believe she said she had like a little under like them 30 Snow Whites left at, at the end of the convention, but uh, this, the Genie completely sold out. And then there was a Donald Duck. This is in commemoration of the 90th anniversary. So as you can see here, it says 90th anniversary. And you got the three, you have three different era, era, eras of Donald Duck. And you get three of these pins. Also only 500 of these gift sets available. These were not sold separately. You can only get them in this gift set. 
And that wraps up my haul, y'all. Um, I did want, oh, and also, if you made a specific purchase of over $70, you got this pin. So it's the Fig Pin Commemorative Disney uh, D23 Collector's Pin. And if you were a gold member and you, and you made a purchase at the booth, you got the lanyard as well. These sold out completely, the pin and the lanyard. Uh, after day one, they were no longer available. So if you went in on Saturday, Sunday, you could not get them anymore. Um, they were completely, completely gone. And so um, after Saturday ended, I bought everything you see here on Saturday. That Saturday was my day of shopping and that was it. And then I was able to connect with one of the vendors and I was, I went on, uh, uh, that was Friday, sorry. And then Saturday, I ended up going to DCA. I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not like DCA. I didn't care for it much at all. Uh, to be honest, I didn't care for it at all. Um, I don't think I'd ever go to the parks there again. Maybe Disneyland for like an event, like, and I'm, if I'm at D23, but I would never intentionally go. Um, DC, I did not care for. Now I will say Disneyland um, was on Sunday, but basically Saturday, long story short, I got on the Incredicoaster and I also got on one other ride. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And that ride just destroyed me. I had motion sickness. I was not feeling well, so I ended up leaving the parks really early because I had to meet up back at the con to meet up with a vendor, and I was able to get a um, a, a, a partner badge. Uh, I was just working side by side with this vendor, and at, and again, I was able to then browse around the booths, and that's where I was able to get two more additional cards from Lorcanum. Um, uh, make some connections and, and network with so many of you who, who stopped by and then we got to inter you know got to mingle etc and so I was able to get the partner badge and um, that was Saturday and then on Sunday um, I went to Disneyland Disneyland was great I met up with my girlfriend I haven't seen in like five years autumn who lives out there so it was really exciting um, I was with my buddies Alejandro and Jonathan as well I will say Disneyland is far better than Magic Kingdom and, and by in the sense of the overlays the rides are just simply better they are they're they're for the most part longer and they just have more detail not all but for the most part most of them um, I did enjoy it uh, a lot a lot but the what I the worst thing was the breakdowns I've never been to the parks and experienced maybe once ever a ride like not break down while I'm in it, but just like break down and not be in service, uh, which was like Smuggler's Run. But outside of that, every ride was broken down. At one point, there were 10 rides that were just shut down. And then there were rides that weren't even like Space Mountain right now. It's not even in action, in service. And Tiana's Bayou Adventure still hasn't opened up either. So you have two of the biggest rides not even active. So it was insane, it was insane. And surprisingly, it got busy that day too. I was like, what are all these people doing here? Like school starts tomorrow. Like, you shouldn't be here. You should be like shopping for like back to school. <laughs> so um, I'm surprisingly there were a lot of people. Uh, so we did rope, dro rope drop that. Um, I decided not to rope drop. I decided to go to the Jolly Holiday and get me for the first time ever the tomato basil soup with the iconic grilled cheese and it was amazing. Um, Daisy's uh, overturned flop pizza was also great. So I was able to try a lot of things I've been wanting to try. I tried the gray stuff, it's absolutely horrible. Like I don't believe these influencers that are like, oh my God, it's the best thing in the world. No, it's not, it's disgusting. And I've been four years trying to get my hands on the gray stuff. And every time I go to Magic Kingdom, it's where it's sold at Gaston's like tavern, it's not there because there's another seasonal thing that replaces it. I'm just like, and I've never eaten at beauty at, at the Beauty and the Beast castle situation. So, uh, it was a uh, I trying it was incredibly underwhelming, but I will say to try it. Uh, so I was there with my girlfriend up until like three o'clock. I met up with her, and then I went back to the convention because honestly, I had more fun at the convention. I was mingling. I was connecting with people. Um, and that, that for me was far more important than the parks. And it was just so much fun. There was so much to see y'all. And what's great about this convention, as I mentioned, is you can go for panels as well. I didn't do any panels. This is my thing. I can literally watch it on YouTube. I'm not going to sit down in a space and like, I don't work for the company. Why would I care to be in a panel? That's me. That's my, again, I'm not judging anyone. That's just me personally. I don't get anything out of being a panel. I can literally just go be on my phone and I can get a live stream off of it. So I'm not, but for me, like my time, that wasn't how I was gonna, going to allot my time. I was allotting my time by networking. Uh, I'm a collector, obviously. So like trying to find some some really awesome stuff to bring home, etc. 
um, seeing what's innovative and what's new and what's coming. Um, uh, a lot of people also go for photo ops. There's a lot of life-size bust and people were taking these awesome photos and also like uh, immersive experiences as well were available. I will say this as well because we're about to end this video. I do not recommend bringing children to, I did not see a single child that was happy there at all. Uh, there were very few children, very few children. The children I saw were not like, were like not even from the ages of like six to 12. No, they were like toddlers. They were anywhere from like three to five. So I get like the parent, like you didn't have anyone to take care of. So they took, you know, took them. Bad idea. All these kids were just pissed, like crying. They were exhausted. This is not a children friendly convention. Please do not take your kids. I highly suggest it. Obviously do what you gotta do, but don't take your kids to this event. They're going to be miserable. Um, they did have like two, three booths for kids, like Playhouse Disney and stuff. Um, it's cute and all, but it's not a children's convention. It shouldn't be marketed that way either. So that's something I just want to put out there for y'all as well. The outside food on the food carts was great. I heard people say it's bad. The food carts are always bad. No, the food carts were really good. Uh, so I can't say that the food carts were bad. Prices were okay, reasonable. Um, overall, I'd say out of a 10, my overall experience was a 9.5. It was absolute perfection. Um, I would. I am doing this again for life. You will see me at every D, every D23 moving forward. I highly recommend if you have not been there, go, go, go when um, registration opens in early 2026. I believe it's like in March it opens. Make sure you get your tickets. Um, you will not, will not, will not regret it at all, at all, at all. Incredible event. Uh, and once again, Enchanters, if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much. This is one of my longest videos, but I really wanted to take you all through this immersive review. Now, I filmed a lot of my day as well, but I'm like not the most tech savvy. So I'm going to look at the overplay, see if it's going to be worth it. And comment below, do you want to see the live footage? Because I did my best. And again, I'm not a vlogger. Um, it's not my thing. I just not like... I don't like to, I'm like, I like talking about pretty cool stuff. Like, it's pretty and it's nice and it's rare. Get it? You need to have it. <laughs> that's my, that's my thing. But I like actually like walking and vlogging. I'm like, oh my God, I can't. There was like so many influencers also like, literally this was them the entire time on their phone. I'm like, I get it's their job, but like, how are you enjoying yourself? Like, how are you authentically enjoying your experience not all but there were a few that literally the whole time they were just their phone live stream their phone and i'm like bro like chick you're not enjoying yourself like you're not living the experience because it's just like speaking to the camera the whole time like literally and i'm like all the more power to you i'm not judging you by the way i just personally like i'm just like this is i can't do that i can't i need to like physically be present i'm not i'm gonna be on my phone i'm not taking i'm not recording like i have very little footage of stuff very little footage of stuff because I wanted to be present. I think that's what's missing in the world. So this is an event where you're going to be fully immersed. You're not going to be on your phone. You're like fully present. You're really enjoying yourself. You're meeting and you're bumping into some of your favorite influencers. Every Disney influencer was there from Paging, Mr. Morrow, Magic Journeys were my freaking favorite. Um, uh, Blake was there as well. A uh, huge fan of his content. Um, who else was there? Vinny was there. Uh, Kayla was there. Um, every single Disneyland and Disney World um, influencer was there as well from the parks who do reviews. Everyone was there and everyone just like, they're there. Everyone just bumping into everyone. And, and oh, and I will say, incredibly spacious. Like you walk in, you think, oh my God, this, 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 can, this is gonna be like, we're gonna be like this. Nope, this wasn't like Comic-Con. The, everything was beautifully, beautifully handled. Um, no bad odor. Never got any, got a whiff of anyone with bad odor. I mean, Disney Disney people know how to like maintain themselves with proper hygiene too. So it's not one of those conventions. But everything very organized and, and pretty abundant. Um, again, the only thing that was scarce was if anything that's limited to 500 to 1,000 units and you really wanted it, those were the things that were going fast on day one Friday. But outside of that, everything was really relaxed incredibly awesome so once again y'all i really hope this video supported y'all in learning about d23 and my shared experience i'm gonna be honest with y'all y'all need to comment because y'all suck at commenting <laughs> comment below and let me know what your thoughts are and if you want me to post that video of the full tour if you want it you got 
If one of you say, post the video, I'll do it. Just one of you. If not one of you comment, then I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> so make sure you do so, Chanters. I always love y'all and I appreciate y'all so much. Stay connected with us on socials. We always do giveaways as well, so go check them out on our website. If you have purchased from us in the past, and for all of you that have purchased this unit already from us, don't forget to tag me. I'm doing a giveaway, okay? So everyone who purchased this, who tags me on socials, I'm entering you into a giveaway, which is gonna be really exciting. So um, go check that out as well. Again, we have very few of these left on hand, once in a lifetime piece to own. Again, this is going to be the piece where everyone has these extensive Iron Shoes collector pieces, and this is gonna be the piece that everyone's gonna be like, I can't believe I never got that piece, and GP had it. <laughs> so go ahead and shop this piece on our website, y'all. Uh, I love y'all so much. Stay amazing, stay blessed, and I will get y'all on the next one. <laughs>